Heard of Nokia? Yeah, you have. In fact, you've probably owned a couple of Nokia mobiles in your time. But have you heard the story of the company's weird and wonderful history? Well, you will have in about two minutes. Nokia is old, like really old. It was founded nearly 150 years ago in 1865 by a man called Frederick Eystam, whose fearsome mutton chop stood as a shining promise of everything that Nokia would one day achieve. Now, obviously there weren't any phones back then, so Nokia made this instead. Paper. Quite boring, and you can't make a phone out of it. Trust us, we've tried. But after the First World War, it joined forces with the inventively named Finnish Rubber Works, a company who, as you probably guessed, made stuff out of rubber. In 1922, Finnish Rubber Works acquired Finnish Cable Works, who made telephone and electrical cabling, and went on to supply cables to the Soviet Union as part of Finland's war reparations. Yeesh. Still, telephone cables, eh? You can see where this is going. The three companies merged Transformer-like in 1967 to form Nokia Corporation, a company that was involved in all sorts of weird stuff like tyres, shoes, TVs, computers... And the standard issue gas masks for the Finnish Defence Forces. In the 1990s, though, Nokia got rid of all its other businesses, eventually focusing just on telecommunications. And it was a smart move! In 1992, Nokia released the Nokia 1011. It could hold up to 99 phone numbers and could receive, but not send, text messages. Nokia followed that up with the 2110 in 1994, which was the first phone to feature Nokia's signature ringtone, which, you might be interested to know, comes from a 1902 composition for solo guitar. So horrible. From there, it was all gravy. Nokia spawns hit after hit. Phones like the 8110, which was featured in The Matrix, or the 3210, which came with Snake and an internal antenna. Fast forward a bit, and 2007 bought the Nokia N95, one of the most important mobiles ever, because it had loads of features that we now think of as completely standard. Satellite navigation, a 5 megapixel camera, even a primitive form of apps. It was a brilliant mobile and a firm CNET UK favourite. But then, just a few months later, something happened. Specifically, the iPhone happened. And it was really good. And follow-ups to the N95, like the N96 or the N85, just didn't look so cool anymore. The iPhone became more impressive with each subsequent iteration, while Android mobiles became more powerful, offering more for the geeky gadgeteer. Nokia refused to use Android, though, clinging to the Symbian operating system like it was a life raft made of annoying pop-up notifications and permission requests. Nokia put loads of stock in the N8, a super-powered Symbian smartphone with a 12-megapixel camera. It was a make-or-break mobile and a make-or-break moment for Nokia. And it sucked! To quote from our review, it's hard not to hear the sound of phone giant Nokia's face slapping on the pavement when you play with the N8. Nokia is making some radical changes. It's letting go of Symbian and its other platform, Mego, and it's closing up to Microsoft, so in the near future we're going to see Nokia phones rocking the Windows Phone 7 operating system. And if those phones fail as well, well, then it could be curtains for our favourite fins. But for the love we bear for Snake, and for that terrible ringtone, we hope that's not the case.